Good morning, Mitch here. Welcome back to another Coastal Trails adventure here on the central coast of Australia in New South Wales. And today I am at the North of Oka Lagoon Walk. So the walk itself is about a five kilometer walk, if I understand correctly from more trails. It's a dirt walkway. Um, so you can see just down here now where I am. Um, we're right by the side of the lagoon. Um, it's a pretty wet morning here at the minute. It's been drizzling and the leeches are out in force. So I'm constantly checking my legs just to be sure. Uh, this is a dog friendly walking track. So if you've got dogs, you can bring them along here so long as they remain on leash, which is great because there aren't too many of those around, um, especially on the All Trails app that I've been looking at so far. Anyway, enough uh, chit chat, keen to keep going and get myself down to the side of the lagoon. In order to get to this track, if you know Terrigal, uh, you need to head along the scenic highway, uh, up from the Terrigal Basin, so down in the main Terrigal Drive, up the scenic highway, and there is a road off to the left along that scenic highway, if you were going towards Avoca, called Francis Street. And you turn left off of the scenic highway down to Francis Street. I then think it turns onto a road called Duncan Street, um, which is a left turn, and then a right turn, I think, onto Lakeshore Road or Avenue, and uh, the walking track starts just on the left-hand side there. It's reasonably well signposted. It's on the street car parking as well, so, and, and there are plenty of places to park your car, which is where I've parked mine. Um, and then you climb over a gate and, and off you go. So this is the end of the lagoon that I've not made it to before. I can tell you for sure there are plenty of mosquitoes around. Haven't seen any leeches yet though. The wonderful thing is that the rain has just stopped as well, so I'm feeling a little bit more confident about getting my camera out if and when I stumble across one of those photo opportunities. We'll keep trying and uh, see where we end up. I've just come off of the main track now, just to the edge of the lagoon, just because I thought I'd take a photo down here. It looks quite pleasant. Uh, there was a few pelicans swimming across the lagoon, but they've just moved on. So I might keep walking and, uh, and see if we can find those pelicans a bit further down the lagoon to try and get one of those photos. Catch you soon. The sun is just coming up over the trees now, and all of a sudden this whole area just changed completely. Amazing what the light can do. And, um, Whilst I was looking around the edge of the lagoon here, I stumbled across this old brake drum uh, next to this great log here as well. And for some reason, the two just connected with me. They just looked really nice with the sun in the background, um, almost the log almost providing a bit of a leading line, but the brake drum providing a juxtaposition between technology and nature, if, if that's the right way to describe it. Anyway, I'm going to take a photo of this here. I think it looks really nice with the with the sun rising in the background over here. I'm gonna get nice and low just to change the perspective a little bit, just to get rid of some of the lake or the lagoon as the mid ground so that I can primarily focus on the rising sun over the trees, the brake drum and the log. And uh, we'll see how that looks. Probably gonna set this to be about an ISO 16. Um, I might need to focus stack because I'm gonna be very close to the brake drum and the log at the front here. Maybe not, we'll try but uh, let's see what this photo turns out like. Okay, so I think because I've moved myself so close to the brake drum and the log here. I am going to need to focus stack because I'm struggling to get everything in focus. I've got it on S16. It's doing an okay job. So what I'm going to do is focus stack this image. So that basically means that I'm going to take three exposures. Um, let's say three because I think I've got the front, the middle and the back. Um, so three exposures with different focus points in each of those exposures. So I'll start by focusing on the, wheel, the brake drum, then I'll start by focusing on the little bit of the lagoon that I can see as the mid-ground, and then I'll focus on the trees at the back as the background. And then I'll merge all of those together in some post-processing. 
that should give me front to back sharpness of the image I'm looking for. But um, one of the techniques that I use, if I'm taking so many photos for a single image and then I'm planning to blend them all together, it, it can be a bit tricky when you go to do post processing to understand or determine what different photos go with what, what's that set of photos. Um, so one of the things I like to do is put my hand in front of the lens, take one shot, so I have just a blank shot, and then take my series of photos and then put my hand in front of the lens again. That gives me a clear, almost like when you go to a movie set and they use the, the, the clipper board or the clapper board to uh, differentiate between one scene or another. That's what I'm doing here with this photo, just so that when I get back to the computer later, I can easily determine where the series starts and where the series ends. And then I can pick and choose the photos I want to and merge them all together. So that's the plan. I'm going to stop talking now because the light is changing a little bit. It does look very different now already because the sun has disappeared behind the clouds. But uh, let's see what we can do. So I'm taking the first shot here focused on the brake drum just over here. I've got a two second timer so that any vibration that's caused by me pressing the shutter button doesn't interfere with the sharpness of the image as well. Always a good idea if you're taking long exposure shots just to remove any chance of introducing shake to the photo. So let's start by focusing there. I'm going to click the shutter. The shutter time's going. So that's now taking a series of three photos for me. And if I look at the uh, playback of those you can see that each of them is taken at slightly different exposures so that I can try and get the best dynamic range possible here. So I've done that one. I'm now going to focus on the log over there at the background. We'll go through the same process again. And then finally I'm going to focus on the trees at the background. And I'm just going to zoom in to make sure they look okay from a focus perspective. They do. Actually, I might zoom in on these ones over here. They look pretty sharp to me. So let's then hit go. And then the last step, once that's finished, is to take a blank shot. So I'm just going to drop this cloth. I would use my hand, but I happen to have the cloth in front of me, so I'm going to do that. Hit go. Cool. Okay, so then what I can do now is if I scroll back through my images, you'll see that I've got different images taken, uh, a series of different images. So I've got nine images in total. Um, and those images are taken at different focal lengths, at different exposures, to try and get the right levels of focus in the right parts of the image, so the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, as well as get the right balance of colors in there for me as well, so I don't lose anything. You know, if I look at that photo, for example, now you can see that the the sky, because I've exposed for the foreground, the sky is completely blown out, so we don't see any details there. But if I move to the next photo and zoom in, we get the lovely colors of the sky there as well, because we've exposed for the sky as opposed to exposing for the foreground. And that's what we call exposure blending. And I often use that technique to try and get, especially because I take lots of photos in the morning and the sky's uh, always a lot brighter than the foreground, uh, I tend to use exposure blending quite a lot just to get that right color mix for me in the high dynamic range. So that was photo one of the day. Um, I'm hoping that turned out pretty well. Uh, we'll see when we get back to post, uh, post processing and I'll share that as part of the video obviously as we go. But uh, we're gonna move on now and see what else we can find along this uh, North of Oka Lagoon track. Um, the rain has just started again now so probably a good time to start putting my camera back in its bag and making sure that I didn't pick up any unwanted travelers like leeches or ticks along the way. Alrighty, catch you soon. some beautiful houses just along this walkway here um, so if you ever want to walk along somewhere and and dream the dream this is the place to come um, they all back down onto the lagoon around here some great plots of land um, some beautiful looking houses so there we go some examples there um, still getting attacked and mauled by mosquitoes um, I probably should have put a bit more mosquito spray on 
but uh, these are the sacrifices we make when we want to go on adventures. I feel like I've come off the trail a little bit now, but I've come around to this just peaceful, quiet, um, I guess it's a connecting or an adjoining stream between two parts of the Avoca Lagoon um, because one part seems to end over here and the re then this lagoon see, or this, this stream seems to flow up that way. Um, I'll probably look at a map when I get back just to uh, just to see exactly what that looks like and, and where it is. But it's a really nice, really nice photo opportunities here. Look at this tree just hanging out over the water here. Still getting attacked by mozzies. It, uh, it just occurred to me that I was asking, I wonder what this connecting stream looks like, uh, and check it out on a map. And I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I put the drone up and have a quick look? Let's see what that looks like. Well, that was fun managed to get the drone up I think I've managed to just about figure out what everything looks like now and how it all connects together in these little stream systems interconnecting the different parts of uh, Avoca Lagoon really cool um, the, I've had to bring the drone in unfortunately just because the rain has started now um, it's also pushing 630 so that means it's probably time to start walking back to the car absolutely not enough time to make the most of that walk so many great opportunities and a lot further to go as well so i'm looking forward to coming back here again in the future and trying to explore some of that track and maybe doing the full five kilometer loop who knows if you'd like me to do that perhaps leave some comments in the uh, comment section below also any suggestions you've got about other places i could be going for a walk and taking some photos would be really appreciated if you uh if you like the channel, if you like the video, if you found the trip interesting, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you'd like to get notified about more of the videos that I'm publishing, hit subscribe and hit that bell icon near the subscribe button so that you get notified when I publish those new videos. Stay safe and see you next time on Coastal Trails. Mm -hmm.